all rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending, presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. Listen, there is power in numbers. And there are some things we are looking at as they relate to statistics and numbers to be watching for as BYU welcomes Wyoming for the first time in six years these teams will meet tomorrow night at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. So we'll go in-depth with our game notes, Jerem. And why not lead off with something that we've been talking about all week, dealing with BYU's success at night? Okay, first game note. Shout out to Nate Slack for this one. Vanquish the Thug. They do good work. Since 2019, BYU's 21-1 in games that kick at 6 or later local time. That's crazy. Okay, the Cougars are 9-10 in kickoffs before 6. You'd think, oh, well, those are probably a lot of P5 games, right? Nope, only three of those 10 are P5 games. Um, and a lot of those last UAB, Boy State, Coastal Carolina, Hawaii, San Diego State, USF, Toledo. So, like, quality G5s, but still, uh, BYU's got to win those. Only two of those 10 are at home before six. Um, nine of the nine wins, one in four versus ranked teams before six. But Saturday's game is after six, so BYU's all but locked it up. The one loss was in 2019 to Utah. That was a very good Utah team that got ranked as high as five. So has BYU already won the game against Wyoming before they even played it? Well, by the numbers, yes. you're telling me yes. you're telling me that BYU has like a 96 percent chance of winning the game if it kicks after eight over the last. Which is years. an A in almost every class. That right? is unbelievable. My Spanish class junior year, 96 was an A. What? So if you were late, you'd get two percent off your grade. So if I was late, I just wouldn't show up. But anyway, <laughs> BYU is the Georgia. Of, of teams that play at night. It's crazy. You know what I mean? BYU's unbelievable. So has BYU won tomorrow already? Yes. BYU's already won the game. Jerem, I mean, 21 out of 22 games you've Incredible. won that when you kick after 6 p.m. Why would BYU time? ever kick before 6 Seriously. at home outside of the SEF game live on BYU TV? 96%. That's unbelievable. And what you're telling me is if it kicks before 6, BYU's got essentially a coin flip, 50-50. We don't know. Well, uh, one, Are you worried can't about help, one can't help but look ahead in the schedule, right? Are you worried about Notre Dame? It kicks before 6, local time. Mm -hmm. What is it, 4.30 Vegas time? Yeah. Okay, yep. so just before 6, 50-50 game. But you know what, that feels like a 50-50 game anyway. It does anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not so much worried about that one. I am very interested to see what ESPN decides to do with Arkansas coming to Provo hopefully, on October 15th. Hopefully at 15th Will that be... Big 12 after dark with BYU hosting an SEC team. When we say Big 12, what we just mean is BYU. Yes. There's no other Big 12 team that's <laughs> going to do this. They're the westernmost new team, right? Yes, hopefully Arkansas is late. Liberty, we hope, is late, but probably not because it's East Coast. Uh, East Carolina is a six-mountain start, so that's good. That's the cutoff, right? TBA for Boise State on November 5th. Hopefully that's late, too. Utah Tech is early. That's FCS. No worries. Stanford... I wonder if that'll be a Pac-12 network game late. We'll see. Yeah, Thanksgiving weekend. Maybe that's an afternoon kickoff, and maybe we're all talking about, uh-oh, <laughs> could get weird in Palo Alto. Oh, sorry. It always Stanford, is. California, because Stanford, California is a is thing. Is the thing. Just hey. the campus? Is it like the Vatican at Stanford? Is that the deal? Is it just <laughs> Stanford, the campus? I don't know how that works. I'm going to make everybody feel better about this game against Wyoming. Do it, right. please. Okay? So you uh, talked do about Do we BYU's need to feel better? We feel pretty good. Yeah. BYU's dominance at night certainly is a thing. How about just overall at home? Okay. In the last three calendar years, regardless of kick time, mm -hmm. okay, regardless of kick time, they were good. BYU is 16 and one at home. Okay, it doesn't matter. Well, being Utah. No, oh, it was Boise State. So three calendar years. Oh, you're saying. So we're going from September 23rd, I, I 2019, yep. to September 23rd, 2022. Three calendar years. Just Boise State. One loss, regardless of kick time mm. in that span. And it was I against like Boise State last I year. I like it. Okay, so again, time of day, I know we focus a lot on that. How about overall, just BYU's really, really, really strong? At finally, home. finally defending Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Like, I was pretty weirded out, and obviously 17's an atrocity and an anomaly. Uh, whatever A word you want to say there. Then 2018 and 19, it's just, it's like, hey, defend home turf. It was a young BYU group that we're seeing blossom now in 2020, 21, 22. So I like that one. Okay, uh, game note number three. BYU's played Wyoming 78 times, spent most of any team not named Utah or Utah State. Okay. I did not realize that until recently. Cougars lead the series 45, 30, and 3. Yes, Wyoming has beaten BYU 30 
times. That's because BYU doth stinketh prior to 72 quite a bit, okay? Uh, haven't lost to the Pokes since 03. Most recently, they played in the 2016 Point City Bowl at that crappy stadium known as Qualcomm. <laughs> Jack gone, Murphy. It's gone now. It. Luckily, it was destroyed because that thing deserved to be destroyed. That was a 25 20 BYU dub. Of course, Josh Allen picked off by Kai Nakua. So, th- this is a long standing game. I do not believe that BYU is going to play Wyoming in 2024, as we've talked about which that was the original contract. They'll buy out of that game. BYU buys out of that game. I don't know that BYU plays Wyoming again for a while, or maybe at all. It just depends. Remember, we're about to go into the BYU is going to play one G5 yes. a year, yes. probably, era in the Big 12. Now, people say, why wouldn't BYU play Wyoming in 2024? It's the one group of five game, a win. You already game. have Nevada contracted as the opener That's at home. exactly That's right. Why. You've got an yeah. FCS team already scheduled. You've got Nevada at home, and then... Hopefully Utah. I think it's uh, at Utah yeah, that year. Right. We so renew the series. BYU's probably feeling like, yeah, it's been two years since BYU's played Utah. That's a, that's the big game. Or then is, you got Nevada, then you got FCS, and now you have nine Big 12 games. Is there another BYU Big Power 5 that may be the skip there? Not that I saw on no. FB schedules. No, it's there's just not. Utah. It's, it's at Utah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. That That's why. Like yep. BYU will have to pay probably a relatively small fee to get out of the Wyoming game, and I anticipate they will do that. So this Well, is kind of the last I don't even know if they need a buyout because they did put in clauses if we go to a P5. Oh, yeah, depend, out, depending on Maybe the there's a buyout for that, yeah. Depending on when that was put in. Utah place. Tech is the FCS at Utah and Nevada. Okay. So there you go. We know the three in 20. Uh, fun fact about BYU playing Wyoming going back all the way to 1922, we talked about how BYU's first ever win as a program. I listened to Behind the Mic. Was I, a 7 to nothing victory against Wyoming. There you go. Crazy, right? I love it. Seven nothing victory against Wyoming in 1922. Boney Fuller scored. I think we talked about it <laughs> Tuesday, yeah. They played twice that year, Jerem. Oh, interesting. Wyoming won. The second game, I think 13 to 7, but they played twice in it's 1922. Like 07 against UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, played twice. That was a vengeance match for the Pokes oh in 1922 gosh. after losing. They rode Wyoming. horses to get to the game. Okay. Uh, now, into some specific details as it pertains to what these teams do on the field, Jerem. Oh, yeah, that. The fourth game note Wyoming has a red zone scoring percentage of 91.7%. Okay, so 92%. Pretty good. Now, let's explain what red zone scoring is. If you get inside the 20-yard line. And you score. And you kick a field goal or you score a touchdown. Yes. Then you are like essentially adding to your red zone scoring percentage. Overrated. Stick. Okay. Yes. Somewhat over. It's, it's not so much about Wyoming. This is more for me about BYU. Talk BYU's 69% red zone scoring percentage because they've had field goal struggles. Not nice. And have not been able to capitalize on those opportunities. Mm-hmm. So I am watching closely on Saturday night if BYU, when they get into the red zone, they can finish drives. And if Jake Goldroyd is coming out and converting on potential field goals, especially those short ones. Because Jeremy missed two in the Baylor game in the red zone. Yes, his three misses in a row are between 30 and 39 yards. Those are absolutely makeable. I would say anything inside of 45 for Jake Older is like it feels pretty it much feels like, pretty yeah, he's automatic. Gonna make, he's going to make it until the last three. More into your number there. So of those nine scores, six are touchdowns. BYU's six um, is 90th in the country, uh, 46 percent, 113th. Not good. BYU has, you don't have to get in the red zone to score a touchdown. Certainly when you get there, you need to score a touchdown the majority of the time. I would say you need to be in the 80th percentile, you'd hope, um, in terms of touchdowns. Scoring, it's like, hey, how about it be 95%? Yeah, you could, be, a, goal happens, you could be 100% in red zone scoring and might, only kick all field goals, and that's not good. It doesn't matter. Right. But BYU has scored five TDs outside the red zone, meaning you score 21-plus. Big two, play. Two of 50-plus, Puka Nakua, Christopher Brooks are those two. So, Hoping for more consistency inside the red zone. Okay, number five. BYU averaged 2.5 yards per carry the last two games versus ranked teams. That's not great. BYU put up 8.4 yards versus South Florida. I do not expect that number against a stingy Wyoming defense. I expect that BYU to split the difference there. Be about five yards per carry against Wyoming tomorrow. Okay, five yards per carry. Yes. All right, we think that they're going to go 150-plus as a team, speaking of BYU. Yep. Right? Yep. So if you have 30 combined carries... Five yards of carry. There's your 150. More right explosion. There. Okay, just there will be the game. hoping that we see an explosive play from either Chris Brooks or Lopini Cato. Just something yeah. behind that offensive line. Yeah, BYU's going to be like, oh, Wyoming's good, but this yeah. ain't Baylor or Oregon. Like, right. get it done. And to your point, stingy Wyoming defense. We brought brought this up yesterday as well. Wyoming's giving up only 123 yards on the ground per opponent thus far. That includes an Air Force game, which is like that's that's kind of weird, yeah. right? Yeah. Like Air Force, typically you think, oh, they're going to run for 200 plus. Oh, 300 plus. 
<laughs> like, that's what they do. It's, it's Air Force. Yeah. Okay, another interesting thing to watch. BYU's run game against that Wyoming front. Now, the final game note I'm going to present is back to special teams. I talked about some of the field goal um, inadequacies, especially in the red zone. The punt game, weirdly, has been weird like for BYU. Ryan Rico needs to right. step it up here. It's, it's been strange. I mean, BYU net punting a season ago, so good. 43 yards per punt net punting. Net meaning ago. you kick and cover there. And cover. Yes. Yeah, I mean, just one of the best teams in the country. A.K.A. In they don't coverage. have a return, typically. Yes, because yeah. he's ripping off, on average last season, 48-plus yards per punt. This year, through three games, BYU's net punting average is 36.6 yards. And I know you should say, well, it's only like six, seven yards difference. Like, how big of a deal is it? It's a big deal. Yeah. Like, no, field, average a, field position is a big we deal. We point at BYU and Ryan Rico as being a weapon. Like, like he's so good at pinning opponents. I would say he could be rip, nuclear at times. Ripping off bombs of punts, right? No pun intended with the nuclear and the bomb. Okay. I think you meant it. But 36.6 yards, I'd like to see that up towards 40, if not what it was a season ago, 42.8. Yes, 39.9 is not good enough on his average as well. Long of 48, 0, 50 plus, only two of the eight inside the 20. Weird. Ryan Rico's got to be better. Jake Olderhead's got to be better. BYU's given up a kick return for a touchdown. Special teams need to be special. Right now it's just a team. All right, Jerem, let's keep this rolling. Game day guarantees. Uh, yeah, with some, some more numbers of sorts. We hope big numbers from certain people on these guarantees. You've been good in game day guarantees. Hit me with three. All right, uh, number one, Lopini Katoa will score a touchdown. He's been a group of five opponent killer. We hope okay. he's all team Lopini killer. Lopini Katoa, the G5 people. killer. Mm -hmm. He will get into the end zone. His impact will be felt tomorrow night. Number two, BYU will hold Wyoming to under 300 yards of total offense. So Wyoming's, back to the first two games. Yes, season. like yeah. that trend mm -hmm. will return, especially at home, at night, Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I like that you're saying it because maybe it'll happen. Okay. <laughs> Unlike 300 mine. yards or fewer of total yeah. offense for Wyoming, and BYU will score 40-plus points. They go big time. I hope you offense. go three for three. Okay. I really do. Okay, here's what I've got. One, Christopher Brooks will rush for 70-plus. Right. I was going to say 100. I was feeling good on that, but I was like, mm, last two games have been a struggle. Let's go for 70. Well, Peeney's the G5 killer, so maybe he gets <laughs> true, some more run, true. too. Cougars cover. Okay. okay. BYU wins by 23-plus. All right. Whatever that number ends up being. Right? Okay. And then Chase Roberts will score a touchdown. Chase Roberts will return to uh, to get one in this Back game. into the end zone. Because TBD on Puka and Gunner. Yeah, just, especially if those just, guys don't play. If those guys are out again, which honestly, I'm fine with them being out for this game. I would like to see them next week, a tune-up for Notre Dame yes. against Utah State. Yes. So those are my three that I will probably yeah. go one for three. Yeah, now. Chase Roberts, Cody Epps, Keanu Hill, Braden Cosford, they got it covered against Wyoming. Isaac Rex. Absolutely.